What's going on guys and welcome back to Top 5 Scary Videos. Today we'll be exploring more horror films that have a not so happy ending. Last time we saw you guys of course was from part 1. So before we dive in, make sure if you haven't done so already to hit that subscribe button. That way you're up to date with our recent videos and our part 2's and part 3's and 4's. We even go up to like part 5. We have a lot of things up here, a lot of things cooking. I'm Taylor McWaters and here are the top 5 horror movies where no one makes it out alive. Part two, kicking off the list at number five, The Blair Witch Project. Of course, we'll start with a classic. The classic POV horror that had its ending straight up spoiled in the description of the film online. Check it out. It says three students vanish after traveling into a Maryland forest to film a documentary on the local Blair Witch legend, leaving only their footage behind. So no one makes it. Thanks for the hot tip, love it, awesome. Sweet! Directed by Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez, The Blair Witch Project was, of course, a first of its kind with the POV cam and with a budget of $60,000, they did pretty well, especially for a found footage movie of all themes. I mean, it grossed over 140 million worldwide, so they kinda did something right. The Blair Witch Project is about a young group of filmmakers who venture into the woods to film a documentary about, well, of course, The Blair Witch, local urban legend. Because that's how how normal people spend their downtime, you know? Instead of playing 2v2, maybe playing Nintendo, they're like, yeah, let's go try and find a witch, just see what happens. People are crazy. So after interviewing locals about the Blair Witch, they head into the woods to look for some clues. Well, some blues clues. After finding a pile of sticks with uh, teeth on it, they don't go home. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I'm starting to see why it's just a found footage film. I mean, these guys are clearly not the smartest. So at this point, they realize they're in a bit of a pickle. One of the students goes missing, that plus the found teeth, the vibe isn't very chill, some would say, not very relaxed. So the remaining friends wander deeper and deeper in the woods, cause let's just do that. And eventually they find an abandoned house. Hearing their lost friend's voice coming from in the house, they of course sprint inside and they find him. And you won't believe what happens next, ready? The movie ends. Yeah. Credits roll. It's, that's it. Yeah, the camera drops, there's a bunch of rattling, and then you hear people getting attacked. You hear it. You don't see it. You just hear it. So after all this waiting and anticipation, you're like, here we go. Let's see these, let's see this witch. It's big old witch. This happens. Presumably everyone died. I mean, given that it's a found footage movie. I personally liked the movie a lot. I mean, it's a classic, but even going back and revisiting it now, it holds up regardless of the dark and spoiled ending. But could have been just a touch better if they made it a bit more, I don't know. Just hold the thing still. That's it. Number four, Dawn of the Dead. Ah, this one's great. Directed by Zack Snyder, this movie is super fun to watch. The movie itself was written by James Gunn and George Romero. Dawn of the Dead stars Sarah Polley, Ving Rhames, and Ty Burrell. It's always so fun watching funny actors in serious roles, like seeing Steve Carell in like Beautiful Boy, or seeing Ty Burrell be like kind of a in this movie. It's awesome. Shows range. These guys are amazing. They're not just funny, cute guys. I don't know why I said cute. They're pretty cute though. They're good looking. The movie starts out with our lead, Anna, and her perspective, okay? So while her and her husband are in the shower together, like getting all slippery and the TV starts to tip us off on what is probably gonna happen in the film. And then as the couple is laying in bed afterwards, they see their neighbor's daughter just enter their house like it's a normal thing. And then she, of course, is revealed out of the shadows to be a zombie. Her face her lips, everything doesn't look good. It looks very chapped, a lot of blood. It's not great. So she bites Anna's husband's throat, and then like a minute later, this guy's like, ah, he's evil, he's a zombie. Like he's gonna try and kill Anna now. Like that's how fast it happens. So joined by the other survivors, they give us the ultimate question. Would you survive an apocalypse if you were in a mall? I mean, that's what everyone talked about after this movie. This was the main thing. I mean, we end up meeting the group of survivors, and it's a pretty entertaining battle. The ending, of course, being the biggest nail biter of all. The group gathers resources this whole time. They pimp out trucks. They finally hit the road and head for a dock. They think that taking a boat and hitting the open water is their best bet at survival and finding uninhabited land by zombies. By zombie lands. Haha. <laughs> so, of course, they lose a couple near the end. People go down. And in a true horror movie fashion, we get a nice heroic sacrifice. He's standing there while they're all setting sail and he's looking all cool. He has that cool hero stance. Only problem is, after they arrive to this island, they're of course attacked by more zombies. I mean, this is a worldwide thing. This isn't a shocker at all. I would have expected this, I don't know. I mean, it's just a matter of time before everyone goes. And number three, Sinister. When Sinister hit theaters in 2012, everybody was talking about Bagul. This guy was the talk of the town, he was the 
But Ghoul was the monster in this movie and I think he's the scariest monster out of all of these franchises. Personally, I don't know. He wears this suit, the long black hair. He looks like every bass player I've ever met in my life, which is like, I don't know, two? Brad and Ian. I don't know, that's it. Shout out Brad and Ian. The film follows the life of a horror novelist named Ellison Oswald, played by the lovely Ethan Hawke, as he decides it's a great idea to move into a house with his family. But what he fails to inform them about this house is that their new forever home was actually a violent murder scene before them. Yeah, he forgot to include that in the pitch. Haha. -ha. I guess he thinks that while they settle in, he can solve the previous murder and other similar cases in town, where they all end up dead except for one missing child of the family. So he's like, yeah, I have children, I have a family, let's do it. <laughs> what an idiot. This is actually a really dumb idea, but it's so good. He also uses this idea to spark creativity for a new horror novel that he's working on. I mean, writer's block sucks, but I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Jeez. Things take a heavy turn when Ellison finds a box filled with Super 8 film reels of the previous murders. Now, this should have been the end of the movie. He should have been like, aha, I have it. There's all the proof I need. Here's the book, it's gonna slap. No, this movie is actually said to be rated the scariest movie based off of your heart rate. So, this movie is scientifically proven to be scary. It's a great time. We have a mix of ghosts that appear at nighttime to like creep the family out. And then we have a kid who has night terrors who just like pops out of boxes and starts yelling, which is amazing. And we're treated to some really frightening death scenes that are revealed with those Super 8 film reels. The film reels are previous deaths that just may solve this missing case. So of course he hangs onto them and looks into them while he drinks in a cardigan, looking all Ethan Hawke-like. So we have to watch them in the movie, but each time you see these scenes, they almost feel like they're mini scary movies in themselves. You know what I mean? Like they're all different families. We see Bagul turning different kids into some of the most gruesome scenes that I've seen in any films. There's one with the lawnmower and it's just, bah, it's fast. The same thing that had happened to the other families happens to them. The daughter of course gets manipulated by Bagul and kills her entire family. And then at the end we see she's being taken away by Bagul and it sure doesn't look like she made it out alive. I don't know. I would put money on dead. 10 bucks on dead, sir. Yep, dead red. We got it. Nice. Now it's 20 bucks. Number two, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. This one upset fans a lot. Fans being me. I am fans. I love the first few Paranormal Activity movies. People thought they were kind of dumb and cheesy. They were. That's why I liked them. I was in. This is what I wanted. They were like a new version of the Blair Witch Project. The first movie was like this low budget film that ended up turning into this huge cash cow come the latest installments. Rather, in stalements. <laughs> I hate myself. The 2014 sequel titled The Mark Ones started strong. It was confident. The usual, you're being stalked by this dark entity thing and it's working. It's hard for this not to work, by the way. Like you can make a thousand Final Destination movies. You can make a thousand Saw movies. You can make probably a thousand of these movies too. Just keep the same formula and just change the family up. That's it, people like what they like. But no, in this one they decided to push it too far and now it's kind of dumb. Everybody dies in the end of this film and it's so rushed and really weird. Instead of having this paranormal force take over one person, like Katie in the first one, we have uh, witches. Sure. So by the end, it felt like the writers didn't know what to do, so they're like, uh, let's just have like a cult of witches kill everybody. Oh, nice. Will it be like the last half of the movie? No, it'll be like the last five minutes. It'll be really fast and really lame. Nice. Here's millions of dollars. Especially with the paranormal films, it's mostly built up to have this beautiful, terrifying, loud ending. Often violent, where nobody survives. Here, we end with people getting dropped through like skylights, randomly, just dead, just, just like that. Santo also killed by witches. Off screen though, off screen, so don't get too excited about seeing that big climax. Irma died, being pushed downstairs by none other than Jesse, who was possessed. And then Anna dies off screen as well by Oscar. It just it happens way too fast and maybe they try taking a risk and changing up the horror elements, but the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, definitely applies here. I mean, imagine in Saw 6, like a bunch of werewolves came in, just started tossing people out the windows. Like, stop, keep it the same. Change it a bit, keep it the same. When it comes to horror, that's like the only category where people are okay with watching the same movie, basically. Look at any of these popular franchises. There's like 10 sequels now. And finally, number one, The Thing, 1982. Okay, so last video I mentioned I Am Legend, and more importantly, the scene that stuck with most of us from that movie was, of course, the dog scene, you know? <sighs> I hate that part. Well, believe it or not, there's another dog scene that sticks with me just as much, if not more. So we go back now to the 1982 John Carpenter classic, The Thing. So what is The Thing? Its true form, of course, remains a mystery, but for starters, it can shapeshift quite well. 
that can copy any organic material and take on the appearance of like your close friend or, like I said earlier, a pet. The thing made its first appearance as a stray dog in the original version, and since that moment, fans were like, oh, this is a very, very scary entity. Like its face opens up, and it's so sad, it's a dog, it's a little doggo! No, dude! And it's so violent at the same time, the other dogs start freaking out, they're like biting the fence, and that's what makes this part so crazy. The fact that the other animals reacted that like big made it even more terrifying. The film, of course, has humans, but don't get attached to them. Usually animals can tell when the thing is around, so they try and warn the others, but this time, they're all hanging out, they have no idea. So McCready, for the first time, when you see the thing, he's looking at the dog and the tentacles pop out, and our facial expression is the same as his, like it matches, like he's like, oh my god, please tell me I'm not looking at this dog right now, no dude, no! Burn it, burn it now, <sighs> dead. So the ending of the thing is up for debate, but it's but it's not. So we have Childs and McCready as the final two, but fans, including myself, have agreed that there's no way anybody on the planet survived after this, especially with one of them being the thing. Like, it's pretty obvious what's gonna end up happening to these poor guys, let alone the world. I mean, look how fast the thing destroyed this group, this entire movie. It's like two hours, bam, they're all gone. It's no question. Shapeshifters are unstoppable. They can't be stopped. They are the biggest and scariest villains, hands down. That's it. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for sticking around until the end. Before we wrap up here, I'm gonna go read some comments from one of our last videos. Top five zombie movies. Taya001 says, I am just grateful that metabolically we humans cannot become zombies and stay moving. I don't know, man. I feel like zombies would be way more entertaining than the afterlife. I mean, they say heaven's like, oh, it's clouds and you drink scotch and stuff with famous people. I don't want that. I don't want any of that. I just want to kind of keep my legs moving, maybe have the arms popping around, bite the occasional, you know, old lady's neck and ruin her life forever and then just keep marching, you know? You have something to do, something to wake up for. Or rather, never to wake up for, I don't know. Chubby the Chicken says, I never got into the zombie series, but this list actually helped me get into this, so thanks, smiley face. Well, thank you for watching Chubby the Chicken. These movies and this list are also a great time, so once you're done with the zombie ones, make sure you check out these ones, because they're pretty good. Despite the endings, how I just roasted all of them, they're still pretty good and worth a watch, or else I wouldn't have talked about them. Prep for it, or Prep for it, maybe it's French, I don't know. They say that these movies are great to recommend. You and all behind the cam are smart, and of course, I have to end on a compliment with this comment, so there it is. Let's get to let that one sit for a bit. There we go. Well guys, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure you like and subscribe at the bottom here because it helps us out a lot. And as always, make sure your notifications are turned on. That way when we drop these videos live, we do our live premieres, we can all hop in the comments and we can chat together at the same time. So when you comment, I can say, good comment, keep it up, bam. Maybe I'll say some other stuff, I don't know. I've been your host, Taylor McWatters. Stay safe this weekend, deuces. Today we'll be exploring more horror films that have a not so happy ending. That sounded weird. Yeah, it says three student films vanish. Three student films. They're like, where's my homework? So stupid. You don't see, heard, you hear these things. Why am I saying it's so weird? <laughs> so stupid. So joined by the others. Did I get lost in the sauce? Sorry. There we go. I got lost in the sauce. There we go. <laughs> ah.